to this week's what's for dinner I have some really yummy meals to share with you this week they're all really easy to pull together because you know I'm a mom and I do not have a lot of time so I'm trying to make things that are very easy and simple so if you like that and make sure you go ahead and keep on watching and if you are new here consider hitting that little red subscribe button I would love to have you give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into this week's meals to kick off this what's for dinner video, I'm gonna be making a chicken and zucchini casserole. This is one of my all time favorite recipes and it's also really easy to make. It's just a very unique recipe and even my husband likes it and he does not like zucchini. So I feel like that is really saying something. So definitely try this recipe out if you have not already. I'm gonna have the whole thing linked down below, but I'm just starting off by cutting up my zucchini. I normally do use two zucchini for this, but one of mine actually went bad, so I was only able to use one this time, but it still turned out super, super delicious. So get those zucchini cut up into bite-sized pieces, and then I'm also going to be cutting up half of a yellow onion into small pieces as well. And now that all of my veggies are prepped and ready to go, we are ready to mix up the casserole. So I just have about a stick of melted butter right in my bowl there. And then I'm adding in a box of chicken stuffing mix. I'm just using the Great Value brand one, nothing fancy or special about it. And I'm getting all of that mixed together. This is going to be in the casserole and then the other part of it is gonna be used for the topping. So I like to take out about a third to go on top. It's gonna to just make it really nice nice and crunchy and then into the main part I'm gonna be adding in all of those veggies as well as about a pound and a half of shredded chicken breast and then I'm also adding in a can of cream of chicken as well as half a cup of sour cream The recipe doesn't call for this, but I do like to add in a little bit of black pepper and some garlic powder just for some extra flavor. I don't think it needs any extra salt because of the cream of chicken that has plenty as well as the stuffing mix, but then you're just gonna get all of that mixed together really, really well. And then we are ready to get this into the oven. So I am just spraying my glass casserole dish with some olive oil and pouring the mixture right into there. And then I'm just flattening it out and making sure that it's in a nice even layer. And then you're going to take the rest of that stuffing mix that you had set aside from earlier and sprinkle that right on top for just a really delicious topping on there. And then you're just gonna pop this right into your oven at 350 degrees for right around like 35 to 40 minutes until everything is cooked through and the stuffing on top is just like nice and golden brown. And this is just a super easy and delicious meal that you guys are definitely going to love. Next up, I am making a ranch and veggie pasta salad. This was super easy and it had tons of veggies in it. It was really delicious. I'm just starting off by boiling part of a box of rotini noodles. I cooked up about half of them and I did go ahead and salt the water and then I just got those cooked up to al dente. And then I am prepping my veggies. Now you can really use whatever veggies that your family prefers. I decided to cut up one large orange pepper as well as some cucumber. I did some tomatoes and I also did some romaine lettuce, but I'm just starting off with the bell pepper here. If you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you know that my son just loves peppers. So I put them in a ton of stuff because they're his favorite and it's just a lot of like extra nutrients and color. So I cut up that bell pepper into small pieces and then I'm also cutting up this cucumber. I do like to take out the seeds whenever I'm putting them in a pasta salad. I just feel like it makes them kind of waterlogged otherwise. So I'm just cutting up that one cucumber as well. 
I wanted to keep this pasta salad really nice and light, so I just wanted to use just a tiny bit of onion. I used probably like a couple tablespoons of yellow onion, and I made sure to cut it up really nice and fine so there weren't like big chunks of it in the salad. So I'm just adding that into my bowl as well. And then I used about half of Aroma Tomato. I definitely would have preferred like cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, something like that would have been a little bit better, but this is all that I had on hand, so that is what I am using up. And then here is that romaine lettuce that I was talking about. I did probably like a good three to four cups. It may seem weird to put romaine lettuce in a salad like this, but it honestly was so good and obviously it added a ton of extra nutrients as well. So if you've never tried it before, I definitely would say don't knock it till you try it. It was really, really good. And then here I am just rinsing off those noodles. I do always like to rinse them in cold water to make sure that they don't get stuck together. For the dressing here, I have about half a cup of mayo in my bowl, and then I'm also adding in about a third cup of ranch dressing. You could also use Caesar for this, but I am using ranch. And then for seasonings, I'm just doing some garlic powder as well as a little bit of parsley. And then I'm also adding in a little bit of salt and pepper, of course. Definitely just do this to taste and suit whatever your family's preferences are. And then I did add in the juice of about a whole lemon, so get all of that mixed together. Now we are just going to get everything mixed together. So I'm just gonna be dumping everything right into there. So I have my noodles and then I'm adding in part of the sauce. I would say don't add the full amount just in case. You don't wanna to add too much because you can't really take it away once you add it. And then I here I'm adding in my veggies with just a little bit of cheese. I'm using an Italian style cheese, but of course you can use whatever your family likes. I would say I used right around half of a cup. And then there is that tomato that I'm adding in and I did go ahead and add in a little bit more sauce and then I'm just getting all of this mixed together. Once you have it mixed up, you can go ahead and add more dressing if you like. You can adjust the seasonings if you wanna add a little bit more salt and pepper. But honestly, this was about right for us and it was a super delicious salad. We really enjoyed this salad and we kept it super simple and just paired it with some hot dogs. So definitely a really, really easy meal. This next one is going to be creamy crock pot steaks. I used venison steaks, but you can definitely use like a flank steak or something like that. This was super easy to throw together and the steaks were super tender. So I'm just spraying a crock pot and dumping in about a pound of venison steak with maybe like a quarter cup of yellow onion. And then I'm just adding in a can of cream of mushroom soup. For seasoning in this, I'm just using a little bit of garlic powder as well as just some regular black pepper. And then I'm also using one of these beef bouillon cubes. Of course, you could actually mix this into your water, but I'm lazy and I just kind of tossed it in there and it turned out just fine. And then I'm adding half a cup of water and I cooked this on high for right around four hours and they came out super delicious and tender. And then about an hour before we are ready to have dinner, I am just making some roasted carrot sticks. I have shared this recipe on my channel a little while back and I think it was a meal prep video, but they're just super easy to make. My kids love these things. Easton literally thinks they're like carrot french fries. So that's a mom win for me, totally works. So we have these quite a bit with meals. It's just a super easy one and my kids love them. So I'm just cutting up, I think I did like four or five carrots here and I'm just cutting them into long skinny sticks and then I'm seasoning them up with some olive oil, some garlic powder, some salt and pepper. I just like to keep ours really simple for my kiddos, but of course you can definitely add extra seasonings if you like, but I like to keep it simple for them. And then I'm just dumping those right on to a baking sheet. And I pop these into a 375 degree oven. I think I do right around 20 minutes on each side. Some people like them softer, some people like them firmer. I mean, it's just personal preference what you prefer. My husband definitely likes them on the firmer side, but I do cook them a little bit softer for my kiddos. But this meal was super easy and delicious. Definitely recommend it for an easy meal. 
This next meal was actually for a little picnic in the park. I made some chicken drummies as well as some deviled eggs. So here I'm just starting off with the chicken drumsticks. I'm just giving them a really good coating and some olive oil. You want to add some sort of oil so they can kind of brown in the oven a little bit. And then for seasonings, you guys can do what you want, but I am doing about one and a half teaspoons of onion powder, about a teaspoon of garlic powder, about three quarters of a teaspoon of paprika, and then about three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper, as well as about a teaspoon and a half of salt. I will have the recipe linked down below that I kind of followed, but I definitely kind of tweaked it to my own needs with the seasonings. So that's what I did, and then I'm just getting them all tossed together and making sure everything is coated well. Then you're just going to drizzle your baking sheet with a little bit of oil so they don't get too stuck to the pan. And then I'm just lining those all up on there. You wanna make sure that they're not touching so that they actually get you know, pretty crispy. If they're too close together, they're not gonna bake right and they're gonna get kind of soggy. And then you're just going to pop these right into a 425 degree oven for right around 40 to 45 minutes. So now we are moving on to making the deviled eggs. So I am just boiling mine in the Instant Pot. Of course, you can do them however you want. You can just do them on the stove. But if you have never used your Instant Pot to make boiled eggs, you guys are missing out. I use the 555 method. I'm just gonna have it linked down below. It's just, it'll be easier for you guys to follow it that way than for me to explain it here. But I promise you, it's like the best way to make boiled eggs. When you pull them out, you're gonna pop them into some ice water for about five minutes and I kid you not they peel perfectly like I am the worst when it comes to peeling eggs ask my husband he always had to peel our boiled eggs for years and years and years because I would just get so frustrated no matter all the little tips and tricks I tried out it just did not work but seriously the instant pot has changed my life when it comes to boiling eggs so if you have an instant pot and you haven't tried it for eggs yet definitely recommend it but anyway here I am just peeling all of the eggs and getting them ready to go I love making dev deviled eggs I think they're so easy and they're just delicious for like a little picnic so that is what I'm making them for today So once I have the eggs peeled, I do like to rinse them off in water just to make sure that there's no like shell remnants on there. And then I'm actually taking the yolks out and putting those into a bowl. These are gonna get mashed up and this is gonna become part of the inside of our deviled eggs. So with those yolks that we set aside earlier, you're just gonna take a fork and mash them really well. You definitely want them mashed well. You don't want like big chunks of yolk in there. Otherwise, it's just gonna be kind of a weird texture. So I do like to mash them pretty dang good before moving on to adding in the rest of the ingredients. 
And now I'm adding in some mayo. I just eyeballed it, but I would say I added in right around half a cup of mayo in there, along with some salt and pepper. I don't use a ton because I do add in some pickle juice and the pickles add a lot of sodium as well. And then I would say I do about a teaspoon and a half of yellow mustard. There's that pickle juice I was talking about. And then you're also gonna add in your pickles in your onion mixture. I don't have exact measurements, I'm sorry. I truly just do it to taste and tweak it as needed, but then I'm just getting all of that mixed together. You can just take a spoon and spoon the mixture right into your eggs, but I think it's so much easier to just throw it into a Ziploc baggie and cut off the corner. I feel like every time I do it with a spoon, it just ends up really messy and I regret it. So this honestly takes probably less time than using a spoon. So that is what I am doing today. And then I just like to sprinkle the tops of these eggs with a little bit of paprika powder. I have to apologize, I did not get an aftershop of everything plated up when we were at the park, but this meal was super delicious for a quick and easy picnic lunch. This next recipe is going to be some chicken lazone pasta. This is my first time I ever made this. I'm just gonna start off by mixing up these seasonings. So I'm using a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of Creole seasoning, two teaspoons of paprika powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and two teaspoons of garlic powder. And then you're also gonna need a quarter cup of flour. I'm gonna have this recipe linked down below so it's just super easy for you guys to follow along. If you ever have any questions, just go ahead and leave them for me in the comments and I will definitely get back to you guys. Now this recipe did call for chicken tenders, but I did not have any on hand, so I just went ahead and cut up a chicken breast into thin strips, and it honestly turned out totally fine. The recipe did say to make sure you use chicken tenders, but we thought this chicken turned out really, really delicious, so I definitely say if you don't have chicken tenders, go ahead and just substitute a chicken breast and cut it into thin little strips and coat it in that seasoning mixture. You are actually going to want to save the rest of this seasoning and flour mixture. You're actually gonna use it for the sauce a little bit later on. Don't worry, we're gonna make sure it's cooked all the way through. Now here I am getting my pan ready to cook up the chicken. I'm just adding in probably about a tablespoon of olive oil as well as a tablespoon of butter and getting all of that mixed together. And then I'm just adding my chicken right into the pan. I think I cooked mine for probably like three to four minutes per side. Just make sure to get the internal temp to 165 degrees. Once your chicken is done cooking, just go ahead and remove that onto a plate or some other sheet and get it set aside. And then you're gonna be using this same pan for cooking up the rest of your sauce. So to this pan, I'm adding in some butter. I added in probably like three or four tablespoons of butter and then I'm just letting that melt. And then into that melted butter, I'm actually just adding in that flour and seasoning mixture. And since there was raw chicken in this, you do want to make sure that it gets really well cooked. I definitely cooked mine for a good like three to four minutes. You will see in a second, it was very brown, it was bubbling, it was definitely cooked through when I added in the rest of the ingredients. 
Once you make sure that that's nice and bubbly, you're gonna be adding in some cream. The recipe called for two cups of cream, but I only had one, so I did one cup of cream and one cup of milk, and then I'm adding in a little bit of extra paprika, and I'm just letting this come up to a simmer until it's nice and thick. I did go ahead and add in a little bit of the pasta water from the linguine. I felt like this sauce was a little bit too thick for my preference and it also was a little bit too strong. The chicken tasted absolutely amazing, like 10 out of 10 would totally make the chicken again, but the sauce was almost a little bit too strong. I think if I ever made this again, I would make the chicken just like I did, but instead of using this sauce for the noodles, I think I would do more along the lines of just like a simple and classic like butter noodle, some type of olive oil noodle, just something very, very basic and simple because this was a little bit too strong of a sauce for me and my husband thought the same thing. So you guys can try it out and see what you think. Overall, it was a good recipe, but a little too strong for me. Well, that is going to be it for this what's for dinner video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I gave you some meal ideas and inspiration for your week. I do upload these videos every single Sunday, so if you don't want to miss out, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up so I know that you guys liked it and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. We played hide and seek for our